Yeah, so I got to apply that. Oh, yeah. 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 I want to welcome everybody to the September uh, regular scheduled council meeting. Thank all of our visitors and all of our citizens that are here in attendance and everyone that's watching uh, via our social media accounts. We're going to open up with our prayer and our pledge. I ask Mr. Watkins if you lead us in prayer. All the roll, Ms. Clark. Mr. Brown? Here. Mr. Golden? Here. Mr. Lyle? Here. Mr. McKinney? Here. Ms. Miller? Here. Ms. Ray? Mr. Williams? Here. Mr. Woods? Here. Well, thank you. I did speak with uh, Ms. Ray before the meeting. She had a doctor's appointment that uh, told her to go home and get some rest. So she did, uh, I did hear from her before the meeting. She's not able to join us. So we'll be praying for her speedy <coughs> recovery. I have one set of minutes to approve from our August regular scheduled council meeting. Uh, there's no any changes or anything to that. I'll ask for a motion to approve those minutes. Second. Motion by Mr. Lau. Is that second. second by Ms. Miller? If you will cast your votes. Motion carried. Next we have, uh, under my report, I have a few things on here. I'm Patriot Day, I'm not going to steal Lynn's thunder. Uh, I'll let him bring that up on Memorial Day, I mean September 11th. Uh, offices will be closed on October 14th for Columbus Day. Uh, I need to reschedule the council meeting that, since the offices will be closed, that's our normal regular scheduled council meeting. So. If, is everyone okay with uh, rescheduling the council meeting for the to the 14th? I'm sorry, hold on, wait a minute, I said it wrong. The meeting after that, it's on the 14th, <laughs> to the 20, to the 21st, yes. Yeah, I won't be able to make it the 14th. Yeah, we won't be here either, Larry. Okay, <laughs> <Yeah, I'm not laughs> uh, no, that's September. Go to October. Move over. Oh, October. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> uh, so we can do the. How is the seventh for everybody? Or the oh, move it up. A move week. it up. Lot better, lot better. Seven. I mean, it's all right. The seventh worth everybody. Is that good? I didn't even check that. That's good, Kirby. Okay. All right. So the seventh, we'll do the seventh uh, for our council meeting. Uh, for the council meeting uh, that we have to reschedule. And I'll go ahead and let you guys know the dates for the barbecue blowout, uh, October 25th through the 26th. We ha we'll have the mayor's luncheon at 12 on the 25th, so I encourage you guys to come out to that, and you'll start hearing a whole lot more about it uh, as we get closer to that. Uh, I got a few things. Uh, I think I Carolina Tech one them and pass it now. I think I emailed this. Well, Sarah or Carrie Bell, somebody emailed it to y'all. I uh, think y'all got that, but I wanted to get it out in the community. We started along with you guys. Okay. Police Department Chief Jones and I uh, started a Safe Streets initiative and trying to do what we can for community awareness. We put three parts to this. Uh, first thing, I'm, I didn't get dates, but I'm going to get some dates for you guys. On We're going to have, I'm, I'm just calling them neighborhood block parties, catch a little thing to have the police department come out. We're going to grill and we're going to actually go into the communities. I'm looking at having four of those. Um, so I'll get dates to you guys where we'll have that we can go out hang out in the community, talk to the citizens, and not just about crime, but this will be sponsored through the police department. That's the first part of the initiative. Second part, we, um, we're we working on, I think, some, well, I know Todd and Larry was up here when we had Code Red. We've uh, reinitiated that and got it focused more, well, not more, focused all on the city. So we'll have the Code Red subscription. We've actually started, I think, training is the 12th, and we'll you'll hear more about that also, but that'll be, uh, a way to alert citizens of what's going on, not with just crime, but if there's a street block because water, uh, a water line is down or whatever it is, just going to be a way that we can be more um, 
in touch with our citizens when it comes to uh, notifications from the city. Also, the tip line there, which we've, we've had, we had this tip line for a while, Hammermack. Um, people don't really use it, but want to encourage the citizens to use that tip line. It's all confidential, so if somebody wants to report illegal activity or just want to report some concerns with anything that's going on in their neighborhoods, that tip line is available there um, as well. And in the last po uh, portion of, of all of it, uh, the initiative is the task force that we put together with Chief John, the uh, investigator Burke King. And what this task force is doing is basically identifying and going out to some of the people that we know that's dealing um, in criminal activities and focusing on the uh, drug convictions, felony convictions, and trying to get some of these people off the streets. Um, so we're paying um, overtime for them. We're short in police department, as y'all already know. We've been short for, I guess, well, since I've been there. <laughs> We've been short for a while uh, with policemen. Uh, so some of the money that we're, when we're short on officers, we're using some of that money for overtime to get um, uh, extra guys on the street as well as the S S Tennessee Highway, what is it called, Mike? I'm going to say this wrong. Highway safety uh, grant that we get to pay overtime and to pay the guys to come out e to do extra patrol. So doing extra patrol in the communities, I'll show y'all this one of the busts they did over the weekend. I was real proud of it. They, uh, I don't know what half that stuff is, but it's illegal. So a whole bunch of prescription drugs. Um, <laughs> yeah, prescription <laughs> drugs and stuff, a lot of stuff they got off the streets. Uh, I think one day, late, I don't know when, but they've made some, already made some pretty big felony arrests. Uh, recover a couple of stolen vehicles, so proud of them guys, and I think they've done maybe four shifts, I think, Mike, five shifts, or it may not have been that many, but five shifts, uh, but it's been good, uh, basically. Long story short, it's been good. Uh, I want to keep that going, but I wanted to let y'all know. I know it's, we sent the official press release, but I also wanted to tell y'all about it again, so um, hopefully it'll help uh, with, I'm sorry, uh, hopefully it'll help keep down some of the acti criminal activity uh, keep our numbers. I don't. It's not really put out as much as I would like it to be put out. But our um, our violent crime numbers have been down. Um, a lot of our reports and stuff have been down in the last few years. And those are not numbers from us. That's from Tybris. Am I saying that right? Uh, from the federal government, TBI. So that's always. I'm always proud of that. Just want to commend them on that. A lot of times we hear the bad. We don't hear the good, so I um, want to take time to mention that. So any questions, anything on the Safe Streets Initiative? Yeah, I just oh, want to – I'm sorry, go sorry. ahead. Sorry. I just want to say, you know, uh, y'all know I'm in law enforcement, and so having a uh, holistic approach uh, like this is, is great. I commend Chief Jones, the mayor, whoever uh, was a part of this. Um, these are crime drivers, uh, drugs – guns, stolen cars, or crime drivers to more serious crime. And so uh, when you get this off the street, it stops the rest of it. So I commend everyone that was involved. This is a great initiative. We've been short reallocating. The money is a, it's a great idea um, for this. So um, this is awesome. I'm glad to see this. Well, thank, thank you. Um, and thank you all for you all support on it. So uh, hopefully we'll see a lot more of that and get the word out that if you dealing in drugs, don't come to Baltimore. We'll lock you up. All right. If you see the judge, ask the judge to keep him in jail. That's a whole other topic. But anyway, uh, I'm sorry. I probably shouldn't have said that. Uh, <laughs> so uh, <laughs> uh, last thing, I have two or three of the two or three council members has reached out to me about political signs in the historic <laughs> district in downtown and throughout the city. Um, I will let me tell you guys the out of the, all the council members that I spoke with, I thought it was uh, under my understanding that it was against our historic zoning uh, as well as throughout the, the city to have uh, political signs in our historic district. I looked it up. I haven't found it anywhere in our charter. Neither has uh, Care Bell. We also spoke with Tom at Southwest. He's our plan, and he handles historic commission and uh, planning commission, and there are no, no regulations against that, and I know I'll, and not to pick on Mr. McKinney, but I know. Yeah, I like, my, I like my sign back there. Uh, yeah. That's true. Yeah, well, I didn't. So I know that I didn't take different. it. That wouldn't yeah, mean. Just, <laughs> yeah, but, uh, yeah, <laughs> just so. Uh, but that that's that's <laughs> been the. Uh, <laughs> Jerry said he didn't do it, but well, that has well, always. As we know rules are rules until the person who's right. in charge of the rules is yeah. now they want to put their signs up. Yeah. Yeah, so I I will tell you guys I. We I it's up to you how y'all want to uh, handle it. Uh, 
there's nothing the board can do before the next election is up, that election cycle is up. So if it's something that you guys want to see, I don't mind putting that, uh, going, you know, sending that through the, I, I can actually turn that over to Ms. Uh, Miller to handle through the Historic Zoning Committee. Consider uh, it handled. Well, we ain't decided if that's what we want to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, uh, but, I, but like I said, I know a lot of you guys called. We had a lot of citizens call. I, um, I didn't know. I just knew that's what I thought the rules were. But they, there's no nothing against their ears. I will say the regulations now, they cannot be erected within before 30 days of the election and shall be removed 48 hours after the election. No, so technically, every political sign that's in Baltimore right now, our public right of ways, are illegal uh, because 30 days from early voting would be uh, Tuesday, I think six, the 16th. Um, me personally. Does that matter if it's a primary? Like, should you put your signs out and then after the primary, you have to take them down and put them back out? Well, see, I. I've never been a part of the discussion on this board, but me and Rick had talked about it. Me personally, I don't know that it makes sense to take, you know, in a right. primary to take, put a sign up and then take it down before the general election. I, I mean, that's just my personal opinion. Um, but technically, by our code here, and I don't really care to send Rick and I, any of our employees out to go pick up all the political signs right. of any of, of any uh, candidate, and when technically Tuesday they'll be the legal anyway right. um, but I just I know the discussion is being had I'm having a lot of calls so I wanted to just put it out that's why we haven't did anything because technically nothing is in violation except but the 30 days before the election now if you guys want to I would say for this election cycle it's leave it alone yeah. uh, and we can just deal with it you know and our next uh, you know I go through the historic zone committee our planning commission and then through this full board but I, I, I'm sorry, I didn't take your signs, Larry. I know. Okay. I just wanted to let you well, know. I, I, I mean, I didn't have a problem. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's not the, uh, the individual. I didn't have a problem with the individual signs, but I'm, I'm just a firm believer that right is right and wrong is wrong. If you're going to treat one one way, you should treat the other person. That's just the way I was raised. Yeah. And uh, I just know <laughs> they took my sign up, and they told me it was a, a rude. But that's good. That's fine. I have no problem. So when I run the next time they take it, I just see them up at federal court. Yeah. Well, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. But that is right. They, they don't that's have correct. a rule. Is that correct? That's correct. There is no rule. Uh -huh. I would just put it on record that. Yeah. Uh, well, no rule against. against <laughs> no rule against them in the historic district. You right? That, no rule. That's what I'm talking right. about. Right. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. Okay. I just city it council. Just you, looks I mean, tacky. city attorney. You heard that? So. Yeah, you <laughs> might, might be subpoenaed if somebody do it, okay? <laughs> Go ahead, Mr. Wood. Can you say the historic, you're talking about right. right. And what else? The historic district goes from 3rd yeah, right. Street on 64 uh -huh. up to where Beale Street is, that area over there, all around the court square. I'm just asking because uh, a lot of people don't know. Yeah. Um, it's just right around the courthouse. No, it goes no, a little further. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and how far west it goes, you know? To, uh, uh, regions on the other side. I don't know region, the street region, right there, right, but it's right. it's more behind regions too. Also, okay, right, yeah. right, okay, mm. okay. Lafayette. Uh, yeah, right, right, uh, right, okay, okay. okay. Yeah. So, but I'll I'll run it through the. We can start that on that agenda and just you know have y'all on handle. But I just wanted to let y'all know it's okay. no. I I learned something myself because I thought it was wrong too. All right, so that's all on my report. Was there any other questions? Anybody? All right, that's all on my report. We will move to public comment. Care about if we got anybody? All right, that's a standing committee reports. Um, under electric, the board met on the 26th, approved the purchase of a 2024 pickup from Lunny Cop, $49,803. The board was informed by TVA of a rate increase of 5.25%. The increase will be for all meters read after October 1st, 2024. This increase will cost the average of $4 to $6 per month. BEA and DS has reached the 4,000 customer mark on internet sales. That completes the uh, BEA report. Uh, moving on to utilities, Mr. Nutt. Good evening, Council Mayor. <coughs> Utility Board met September 4th last Wednesday. Uh, A2H has submitted an assessment plan for the lagoon to TDEC, which means it's on their desk. So. They're rolling with it. We also approved the purchase of a new sewer camera. 
that uh, ours is outdated. And we received our second marketing assistant program payment of $27,628 that we used for the public awareness uh, to promote 811. And the gas lines at New Hope and Smalley have been completed, and the gas price for the month of September is still at 65 cents. That concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. Muscle. Thank you. Uh, All right. Fire Chief Price. Jim, I turned my heat. Well, I did. My wife turned the heat on, so he got, he got some sales for me over here. <laughs> okay. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Mr. Uh, Price. My report. Uh, total fire call last month was 33. We had city, we had 18, had 15 in the county. Uh, training hour was 269. Smoke, smoke alarm installed was 19. Plus, we did two safe awake alarm. Them alarm is for hearing impaired people that have a hard time hearing smoke alarm going off. So we installed two of them in. Um, fire code inspection 26, public relation event one. Um, the mayor was talking about, I want to invite you, all you guys, to our 90. 9-11 program tomorrow. We'll start at breakfast at Backwood uh, Restaurant. Uh, we will be leaving Backwood about 7.45, get to the station at 8. Program start at 8 o'clock. Wednesday. Wednesday, I'm sorry, Wednesday. Tomorrow, right? we, should, we, we should have you guys out at least about, um, if we start at 8, you should be out about 8.30, something 9. We don't have a real long program. And just want you guys to know, August the 30th, when we went and had our first responder career day, it was a big success. The kids, the staff, they really truly love it. Mayor I want to thank you, Chief Jones, and uh, Mayor Polk not here. Thank you, guys, for uh, furnishing donuts for uh, the staff and the people that came out. That's my report. All right. Thank you, Chief President. All right. Police, Chief Jones. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. My report is as follows. Cost of service, 619. Citations, 179. 28 accidents, none of them fatal, seven injuries, 21 property damage. We had 49 arrests, 18 juvenile, 31 adults. Special events, we did a safe seat check, DUI saturation. We've had six of the safe, six of the safe street task force scheduled. We did career day with the fire department, 65 hours of training. Are right. you going to do the surplus now in case somebody has questions? Are you going uh, to No, I'll, I'll wait. Uh, but, uh, Mr. Yeah, I, I was just going to, uh, is night out, is it coming up now? Coming up, you know, uh, night national, out. Well, look, it, we night. missed it. I was planning on doing one of the neighborhood parties on National yeah, Night it's, Out, it's but it was last month, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. I just, I, yeah. I, I, thought, I thought it was getting close well, I to thought it. Well, I thought I missed yeah. it. I, I okay, okay. My, okay, thank you. Okay. Yeah, okay, <laughs> okay, okay, thank you. All right, thank you, Mr. Jones. Uh, next. Parks and Rec. Good evening, Mayor. Council. Good evening. Parks and Recreation Department reports on the following. Uh, last month, we worked on a couple of washouts at, out at Pleasant <coughs> Creek Park, and there's a washout on the drive at, at the Kaboom at Northside Park that we've begun to work on. Uh, tomorrow, we're going to get back on that, as well as put uh, fill in some of the issues that's off in the inside of the playground area as well that need to be addressed. Uh, the exercise class, the line dance class continues Tuesdays only, 5 p.m. Also, our adult pickleball is Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays, 9 to noon. The adult men basketball league registration, we're going to start that at the end of this month, uh, the 30th, and we'll run it for about a month. Hopefully, we can get enough to participate this year. And lastly, our soccer league registration has ended, and the games will start in the one week, not two weeks from now. I think first game is September 16th. So if y'all want to see some good entertainment, <laughs> that's a fun league that's come out. And that concludes my report. Thank you. Oh, right. Mr. Forward, I, yes. I was trying to think whether I should uh, break you in tonight asking a question about the school, something about the school system. But I'm going to let you slide tonight. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Streets of sanitation, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> say, tell him, man, you're, a, you, you're not a school board member tonight, are you? <laughs> City employee. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, members of the council, department heads, public, uh, Jerry Mayfield, street and sanitation. And uh, we started our, well, we're doing our trash pickup all around town like we normally do. We'd eat and everything is still going on. Um, 
our landfill was 122.33 ton residential. Commercial was 295.38 ton uh, for a total of 417.71 tons trash picked up. And they said I got uh, 36.78 ton leaves. And I'm, I'm still trying to figure out where that come from. But anyway, uh, got bulk items. We start picking up October 1st bulk items. And I'm showing a bid opening on uh, dumpsters. Yeah, we got dumpsters with probably just one bid. Right? But, um, it's always the same one. Waste equipment, uh, nine, $995 for eight yard dumpster. We have 12,000 budgeted. It comes to $10,095.88. 10, and what we usually do, if y'all don't mind, I usually call and ask them to give us another one because we have 12,000 budgeted, so we usually try to slip one or two more in there within that 12,000 budget. So any questions on that, on that uh, bid from waste equipment? Or is there a motion to approve the bid from waste equipment for $995? Motion by Mr. Lau, second by Mr. Williams, and we'll catch a vote. All right, motion care. Anything else that's it, Jay? That's all, all I right. got. We're hoping we're hoping it's taken care of also. I think Mr. Mayor's yeah, gonna we got an update on he's on got an update yeah. on that here in a minute. Yeah. I'll let him take care of that though. Right. Maybe that'd be all. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. All right. Uh, Miss Jessica is not here tonight. Uh, um, zone in, Mr. Watkins. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Good you should evening. have a copy of my report. Uh, building consultations eight, building permits written three, building inspections four, plumbing inspections three, mechanical inspections three, safety inspections two, issued three certificates of occupancy and 30 courtesy notices. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Ms. Watts. Next, tourism, community development, Mr. Hill. Good evening, Council. Good evening, um, Mr. From my report, uh, I think I reported on this last time because it had happened, but it did happen in uh, the month of August, so I added to my report again the grand opening of the Timbers, and again, thank you to those that were able to come and those that sent regrets. Uh, we hosted a decades-themed concert at the Louise with Party Planet, and if no one else had a good time, your mayor had a wonderful time yeah, at the yeah. concert. <laughs> he put on a great show. Uh, and the, the band did and the mayor did. So it was, it was a lot of fun. And we've got our next show this Thursday night. Uh, it's uh, a tribute to Red Skelton. So it'll be some good, clean comedy. And all of you are welcome to come and uh, take part with them. Uh, sit upstairs uh, with the mayor's tickets if you would like. Just get with me or him, and we can get that taken care of for you. What's that? Uh, seven. Yes, sir. And uh, then I did complete the capstone project for the TSED certification, and that graduation will be uh, October 3rd. So that, for myself and Carrie Beth, will be done. Yeah. So who's going to be the complete. comedy for Thursday night? Who What's that? Uh, his name is Brian Huffman. He's a comedian, um, and he does a tribute to the old Red Skelton before my time, sorry. I don't, I'm not completely aware, but he does a tribute to Red Scout, so it's good, clean comedy. So, Thank you, Mr. Hill. That was it for here. Uh, next is Story Zona, Ms. Miller. Um, well, we had a meeting and we discussed getting new members, which we're going to take care of this evening. We also, of course, discussed um, still working on the east side market and that area and that project and um, we're also going to bring in our state rep um, for historical Bodoni to come and do a class with us that's something Michael Miller said that they had done in the past and we're going to do that again so we decided we might as well wait until our new members are with us and um, I'm excited um, Carrie Beth said that 
it's time for us to select a new chair of that commission. So we'll be doing that at our next meeting as well. That's it. Thank you, Ms. Miller. All right, that's all the standard committee of reports. Next on old business update on the flood in the Union and Neely. If y'all can recall, Mr. Uh, Rest, well, Mr. McClellan, I call him Rest. Uh, Mr. McClellan came to our council meeting last uh, month about that, um, and I know Mr. Woods mentioned it, but we, I guess Friday, we, well, before Friday, I came by one day, I forgot what day it was raining, and I noticed that it wasn't much rain at all in that yard, his, that, not just his yard, but that whole area of Union and Neely was completely underwater. And I took, um, at the time, Eddie came with me, and we went over there and looked, and we was, he said that it had to be something that was stopped up or something inside of it collapsed or whatever. So it, once it dried all up, I think Jerry went by, was it Friday? Friday, I think. Thursday? Yeah, they found a king. Well, he said, a, well, Jerry said a California king, but it was a mattress. There was a mattress in the uh, the drain, two, three tires, and truckloads and truckloads of just debris and trash and just. I mean, it was it was an awful amount of debris inside of it. We they got all that out. They put one of our firemen, uh, Tyler Rice, my Sarah's son. He got over in the inside the manhole and inside the uh, cover that with the fire department. Well, when they brought the truck, they dumped, I think, 4,000 gallons of water in the thing. It didn't, ever, it didn't touch it. It didn't move at all. It was stopped up so bad. But they got down and, and cleaned out the drain with the fire hose and got it all cleaned out. It started raining, I think, Friday night, and I left my house about 9, 9.30, went over there, and the water was wide open, flowing through the drains just fine. So it cleaned it out. And uh, Mr. McClellan was real happy it, that he he was proud of it. So we're gonna keep watching it just to make sure. But it was just just full of one of the uh, the way that covered is it goes. It's two covers that go into one big cover, and it's like three that are, that connect right in the middle of that road there, and they were all just stopped up with trash. So you unfortunately, it's possible you could put some kind of bars or something there. It is, but they they slow down the way all those oh, covers okay. are. Those are made to be open. Okay. Um, because if you don't, it you, all you're gonna do is put more debris wherever that uh, that grate is. So um, it's that's, it's grates in the road um, right there. But the way the way that water flow, it's just it's trash from all over town that goes. When it rains, it gets wet. It water just water flows downhill, and the trash flow downhill with it. Um, like it's like those tires and stuff. That wasn't stuff from Rusty Yard. That was stuff from just on the side of the road. Um, that has just got in there. It just became my issue when it stopped up the drain and under the city street there. So, um, but we'll try to keep a watch on it and try to keep that, you know, maintained over there. Well, I just wanted to say thank you because uh, Kira Bowden, who bought that house on, on the, the other outside, side, yeah. had uh, mentioned, stopped me and asked me and said that she was trying to, it was an issue at her, at her house too. So I'll see her in a few days and I hope she'll. Oh, yeah, she was out, the whole neighborhood was out there. Yeah, uh, I couldn't go home. I <laughs> yeah, was like, what's had, going yeah, on? We had it all blocked <laughs> off and because we had, he had a whole whole load of people over there and truck, The actually the fire truck, land truck messed up the road. It started sinking in the road, so uh, we got to go back over there and fix that. So it was a, it was an all-day deal on Friday, um, Thursday. Thursday. It was an all-day deal, but they got it done and nobody got hurt, so, well, I don't know. All right, so that, that's update on that there, that ditch there. Uh, moving on to new new business, uh, approval of bank lending resolution 2024-009, capital outlay note for the residential sidearm uh, truck. What this is, as you know, we do the buyback program, so we're buying, we're selling the old, getting the new one, and the money we take from the uh, the old one will go towards the cap, the, the balloon payment on this uh, note here. So we do like we normally do and get the local banks to bid on, see who give us the who gives us the best interest rate. And Simmons had the low uh, rate at 4.2. CBS was 4.24. Centennial was 4.94. So my recommendation and request from the council is to approve the loan with Simmons at 4.20. All 
I had a motion by Mr. Williams there a second. Second by Mr. Williams. Is there any question? Yeah, here was a, uh, the interest for the, uh, trust, I mean the bank and the interest. Simmons was 4.2. Uh -huh. CBNS was 4.24. Centennial was 4.94. And the motion is to go with Simmons, right? Simmons at 4.20. Any other questions? Uh, four hundred and twenty-three thousand one hundred and ninety-four dollars and sixty cents. Them trucks are expensive. Now, hold on. I'm sorry. That's what the loan is for. I don't know the. You, are you asking how much they're giving us for the old one? Do you know that number? They have a number that's guaranteed. But usually, what happens? We put it on gov deals and whatever, whatever they guarantee, we end up getting more for it. Um, I don't. I, I'll get that number to you though. Um, all right, if you will cast your vote. <laughs> uh, motion carried. Next, we got approved to sell polo, po polo, police <laughs> surplus equipment. Um, Mike, I don't know if y'all got the list or not. Mike has a list of um, it's four like ex explorers. They just sitting in the sitting at the impound lot now. And but we can't sell anything without the approval of the council first. Anything I think is over a thousand, we have to get the approval to deem it surplus. Once y'all deem it surplus, he'll put it on gov deals or scrap it or whatever, and put it in his uh, drug fund, general fund, or however he decides. So. Do you sell it to the public? We usually, yeah, well, it has to be sold at a public auction. We usually use gov deals because we usually get more people because it's more people that bid on it. Uh, we used to use some things we used to do. We take it down to Lena Jackson to have some stuff local, but I don't, he, well, you know, he's passed, but I don't know that they even doing any more auctions at all in, in, anyway. So go ahead, Mike. Uh, I think it's about six vehicles. I gave you the list, but these are so far gone. I then most of them are going to scrap. Two of them, I think we have another agency might be interested in it, and they're going to take two and put them together. But these were explorers we bought used from people before they had police packets. So they, we got money's worth plus some out of them. Yeah, I'd say so, yeah but you, we used though. to sell them at auction, or we would now, Ford would buy a lot of the newer ones back from us for future purposes, but these, we were putting three and $4,000 in them at a time when they were going to the shop, so that was part of my maintenance budget that was so huge. The two that you're talking about putting together, what what year models are those? The two newer ones, do you know? I want to say like old twos. Okay, so they're they're like the older ones. Huh? Yeah, they're the okay. old ones. They're the ones we got when <laughs> Pat was here and we just bought those. Yeah, no, they're you. the okay. old <laughs> ones. <laughs> <laughs> is there a uh, motion to approve those? Uh, I have a motion by Mr. Will, second by Mr. Uh, Mr. McKinnon. Yeah, we don't want to say that they're about around here. They might be a little upset. <laughs> so, <I'm a> lemon. <laughs> <laughs> motion carried. Uh, send them to Memphis. Yeah. Tell Memphis police will catch them in. <laughs> 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 We got an appointment of two new members to our historic zoning commission, uh, Ms. Candace Shackford and Mr. Michael Johnson. Both of these individuals have agreed to serve. I will ask for a, a approval to appoint them to that uh, historic zoning commission. Why don't y'all stand up so we can see who you are? Oh, are they here? No. Okay, Mr. Oh, okay, Mr. Nice Mr. Johnson. Nice okay, nice to meet you, Mr. Johnson. He has the big, pretty white house on the left, headed out of town with the flags, big, tall, two-story house there. Next yeah. to Camille's shop, the yeah. first one next to Camille. Okay, okay. Yeah. Well, and also is a teacher at Fayetteville High School, and we work together, and he just got Teacher of the Month, and it's his first year teaching. Congratulations. Well, yeah. well, I second that motion. Have, who made the motion? Motion by Mr. Lau and a second by Mr. Uh, Golden. Uh, if you would, cast your votes. All right, 
utmost in care. Thank you so much for being willing to serve, and we look forward to working with you. All right, next we have on the agenda Mr. Bob Williamson concerning the stormwater drain issue at 342 East uh, Market Street. Mr. Williams. City Council and Mayor, I want to thank you for the opportunity, give me the opportunity to, to present some information to you. Now that it's on the agenda, I see it says at 342 East Market Street. I want you to know that's what prompted me to bring this information to you. This is not, I'm not asking for anything about 342 East Market Street, even though it's impacted. Uh, I believe you were given a packet of information, Carrie Beth, I think, took, uh, was kind enough to send that to you, and uh, that should shorten time. But just, just in case, I've got some uh, handouts here. Yeah, it's up on the monitors too. But uh, you can use this in front of you to read certain parts of it. This is the uh, drain storm system that uh, I want to talk about. Now, uh, if you'll allow me to go over to the monitor and point, if you would. This is my property. I don't trip over a wire. <laughs> this is the storage business right here. And uh, this, you'll see a blue line, a light blue line on your piece of paper. That is the location of the right of way. That's where my south, by the way, this is Point North. South of that blue line is my property. North of that blue line is going to be the right of way and the highway and uh, of course properties north of there. Now, uh, as y'all probably are aware, I, I know uh, Councilman Golden was actually there the day it happened. Uh, in front of this building, there is now a large sinkhole. And that sinkhole is a result of uh, uh, the line, the red line that you see going up under the corner of that building, that is an extension from a manhole structure on my property. Okay. Here's, here's the information I wish to share is, as I was working to address this problem on my property, uh, I did a lot of research and also took some still and uh, video imaging of uh, what was down there because, uh, from that manhole structure, there is two lines feeding into it from the right of way. Okay. On the north side of the highway, you'll see on your piece of paper it says, uh, it says something about a box culvert. Box culvert approximately 14 foot deep. That is on the north side of the highway. It is a open box culvert. It has a grate on the top of it. It's fed by water that is running down from west to east along the highway on the north side. But most of it appears to be coming from a drainage ditch that extends uh, about three, 305 degrees, <coughs> so north and slightly west of that uh, culvert, that box culvert. And uh, that ditch crosses private and uh, city property uh, and is fed by a large culvert that comes underneath Jackson Street and empties into this, this gully, big gully. It's an open top gully, or open gully. So most of the water seems to be coming from there. It empties into that, it's intended to empty into that box culvert. It goes down 14 feet and then there's a, uh, a line. I do not know what it's constructed of. I was told it was concrete, I don't know but it extends under the highway, crosses all the way to my property into that manhole structure that you see on my property. Okay, at the manhole structure, it's 17 feet deep. That's where most of the water is coming through that uh, storm system that's on the right-of-way, if you will. On the south side of the right-of-way right are two shallower 
much shallower box culverts. The one that is, uh, you'll see it, it says open drain number one on your, on your piece of paper. Uh, that's where that part of the underground part starts. So the water's draining down the south side of the highway, goes into <coughs> some portion of it, goes into that open drain, goes underground along the south side of the right of way. There's another open culvert uh, that you see is, is says number two. And then there's a line extends from that open culvert, again crosses onto my property and goes into the manhole structure at a higher depth. Uh, it's about uh, four to five feet, six feet so from the opening of the manhole structure. Uh, now, here's, here's my concern is there's, as I've dealt with this, there's been a lot of assumptions made by all uh, parties involved, uh, TDOT, City, and myself. And uh, what I have tried to do is spend time uh, trying to uh, clarify or dispel or confirm any of those assumptions. And what I'm prepared to do tonight is to present to you some, some, some of that, uh, dispel some assumptions and question, bring into question possibly others. You may have questions at some point, so uh, I'd be happy to try to, to answer those. Excuse me, I have a question. Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> um, maybe because you think people have already been discussing this or whatever, like you said, people already know what it is that you, I guess, are wanting or asking for the council, but can you lead with that? Like, what, did it, what is it that okay. you're looking for us to do? Uh, I would this? say there was two, two things. Okay. One is uh, uh, there is a sidewalk project. It's a multimodal right. grant for the north side, right. and it goes right over this drainage system. And that grant application didn't call for any movement of uh, utilities. Okay. Uh, what I have found may bring into question that that uh, that position in relative to that sidewalk. Okay. My second concern is potential future liability, because there's been some assumptions made that if uh, certain situations were to occur it might be assumed that I am liable for those situations. Are those assumptions? Uh, one of them well, is, no okay, no you, you, you're talking. all aware of Baker's Glass on the north side of the highway. Right. Okay, during certain heavy rainstorms, water floods that shop and has historically for some time. Uh, Corey's not here tonight. He said he was gonna try to make it, but uh, uh, for some time prior to me even owning this property, there was flooding of that shop. So I, I didn't want Corey to assume that I was responsible for his shop flooding. Uh, that is based on the assumption that has been made by primarily TDOT that the blockage, the impediment to water is on my property. Okay. Uh, that assumption also affects the sidewalk project because what I have found is there is an impediment prior to my property. Okay. If you uh, if you look on uh, your piece of paper, it's hard to see, but it says right away, right here, right away for ROW blockage. I'm sorry, abbreviation for right away. I was able to put a camera down into the manhole structure and take pictures. You can. You can hear me. I don't have but, uh, three of these. You can uh, pass that around. This this picture is placing a camera in the manhole structure. The camera had uh, zoom ability, so I was able to zoom in. This is approximately 20 times zoom. And what you're looking at is debris that is in the channel under the right-of-way. And let me ask you this. Okay. So is this right-of-way, is that TDOT's responsibility or the city of Bolivar? <laughs> uh, that's, 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 that, that, right. <laughs> that's been part of the, uh, the debate, I guess you would call it. Uh, and... Uh, 
I've put in your packet what I have found. I can't answer that question. I can only tell you what I have found in references. Uh, it, it, we don't even know who put it there, to be honest with you. I, I have not yet been able to determine or find records, T dot or otherwise, as to who constructed any part or all of that. So it a, a best answer I'm giving you, uh, Councilman, Council Person Miller, is that it probably was constructed by TDOT, possibly may be a better answer, but their position, and it appears that state law says once they do, that the city assumes responsibility. But uh, that's... Uh, so this needs to be cleaned out is what you're saying. <laughs> I don't know that cleaning out is the right answer oh, okay. because uh, if you were to go down there and look right right above where that is on your piece of paper says right away there you'll see a patch of gravel mm. because what has happened is that has collapsed at one point it was 10 or feet uh, more deep at, uh, at one point it, it first showed as a depression and it got deeper, they put gravel on top of it, it depressed again, they put more gravel on top of it, and then it caved in to a depth of about 10 feet and they filled that hole in with. And that, that picture you may be see, see may be the gravel they poured in there. So I, uh, I don't think clearing it out is going to solve the problem. Whenever you say they put gravel in it, who put gravel in it? That's on your I, property, right? That sinkhole is I'm on your property. I'm not saying that, but <laughs> <laughs> I haven't heard those words. <laughs> yes. I don't know. I think that I that means that, that they are assuming responsibility once they start doing things, <laughs> right? Well, have you looked into this, <coughs> Mayor McDivitt? Uh, yeah, we, me, and, me and Bob have had multiple conversations with me, Bob, Jim, Jared, uh, Eddie, Mo, all of us, and TDOT has refused to, they have taken the stance that they're not responsible. Um, I don't see how they're not, um, because we don't do anything on state highways in the city limits, outside the city limits, and there's been multiple, like the... If y'all may, y'all may may or may not remember, that was an issue in front of BP um, where that road was collapsing. There, they came and fixed that. I mean, everything on the state route, they always do. As a matter of fact, they fuss at us if we go do stuff on the state routes. Right. So why this is different, I don't know. Um, and like I've said, like it's this was an issue before it happened, but I I don't know where our um, the liability lies because I'm not an attorney and I'm I don't try to argue with T dot. I mean they rules are it's T dot, so I can't really tell you. Mayor, who has spoken to T dot? Who has spoken to T dot? Uh, all of us at the we haven't we spoke to uh, what is his name? Borden Borden. What is the T dot? What's his name? Rick? T J. Borden. T J. Yeah. So he's the local guy, and so he uh, borders, and he re, he speaks to his upper group and it just goes up and that's how it comes down to us so um but that's any other time in the past when there's been an issue on the state route with draining so like that that union neely deal that was a city street we never even spoke to t-dot about it uh anytime it's on 64 any of the state routes our call is to them or to him and they handle it from there and fix it or don't fix it or whatever in this situation their stance i don't know who Bob, do you remember that email, that lady, I guess it was a legal <laughs> counsel or something that responded? Jennifer Ivey, that is the uh, staff attorney at Jackson. Yeah, she said that the TDOT stance is they don't, it ain't their responsibility. So did, did they come out and check it out, drop cameras, look in the manholes? I believe so. I, I, Bob may know better than I do. If they did, they didn't contact me. Do you know y'all did? They did. That? They did come okay. out in, uh, with a camera crew, and uh, I, what I was told was that uh, – they, they first tried to look through this end, this part.
pipe comes out into a deep gully, and they put a camera in this end and said they couldn't see anything, and then they came back to the manhole structure and put a camera down in there. I don't know what equipment they use, and they claim that about 10 feet from that manhole structure, they hit an obstruction but couldn't see it. In your packet is a picture of that obstruction. So uh, why my camera was able to do that and theirs couldn't, I, I can't explain that. Have but, we sent uh, these pictures and stuff back to them? Excuse me? Have we sent these, these pictures back to them to show them? The they've, they've got them. Okay. Uh, all the correspondence that I've shared with uh, the mayor and I've shared with Carrie Beth and, and TDOT representatives as well. The last answer I got was their position hadn't changed, that they can't do any remedies on private property. But I wasn't, in that email, I was not asking for a remedy on my property. I was simply pointing out that a remedy on my property wasn't going to solve the problem, that there was still going to be blockage. Uh, so uh, I, I can't fix this problem on my property. I can fix my problem to a degree, but I cannot fix <coughs> the blockage that is on that right away. What I was told at one time was uh, 50 feet from the center line, uh, but when I first brought this up, TDOT, uh, the area supervisor came out and painted a white dot on my parking lot and said, we don't go past that point. Like I said, I was told 50 feet, uh, more than once, 50 feet, feet from the center line, line. yes. Well, again, my concern is, uh, one concern is is uh, Baker's Less flooding. And I, uh, right now, Corey's been very uh, understanding and patient uh, and uh, doesn't hold me accountable for that. But my sec, my, Another concern is if there's flooding on the north side, it tends to flow across the highway to the south side, which means there's going to be accumulation of water on that highway. Uh, this sidewalk project is a safety concern. I think a bigger safety concern is water accumulating on that highway. That's why you would think the state would do something. They could come across the highway. I guess they're waiting on the highway to fall in, right? Mm. Mm. Seem that like cause they're highway. I know, but they don't want to do anything yeah. about it until the road falls in, you know. Mayor, do you have any suggestions? Absolutely none. <laughs> I, I mean, cause I don't, I'm, I, and we didn't, we, we've been, Bob was, we've been going back and forth about, well, we have been going back and forth, but not that way, but just about trying to get help because it, we talked about this before that sinkhole and it didn't even happen. Um, and trying to help how we can, but I, I don't know <laughs> what the fix is or how we address it because it's on the state route. And this is going to be a big fix. This is uh, yeah, I mean, it's going to be a big fix. And the sidewalk issue, so we have the grant, the multimodal grant, right. the en engineers and I, we, Bob and he's came and done a lot of research on, on that part of it. I, our engineers, they're doing the design and all of that on the north side of the highway. Um, and I'm not aware, Bob may be aware, there's no, there's nothing in there that's going to address any type of, or change any type of drainage. They're just designing, they're just putting the sidewalk on the north side. The, I, the grant does include uh, accommodation for drainage along the north side of the highway. It's a curb and drain, open right. drain arrangement. It's but nothing state. under, nothing no. under the road. It's just no. putting the, like, curb and gutter, I guess you would say. Um, but I, I don't I don't know how we, I mean, because I've never, and I don't know, Jay, I don't know that J, we have ever fixed anything on the state highway. No. So we're going to ask Mr. Stoddard to maybe send a letter along with some of this information to the area manager or his manager to see if we can get a second opinion or just a recommendation. Or we, I, well, I let him say this, but I'm pretty sure the, they already got all this. Bob, I'll say he's been very thorough in all of this, and the only second opinion will probably be a judge, but, I mean, I doubt, 
I doubt T. Lott's attorney has as much respect for Mr. Kevin as I do. But. <laughs> Well, no, their counsel Sent was Mr. responding Wade. to Mr. Okay, Mr. Yeah. Yeah. But, and we, what it's is just it? been a conversation. We've all been right. in the emails, right? But before I got the latest information, I, I did uh, ask an attorney uh, friend of mine uh, to arrange a, a meeting with TDOT in Jackson, and we went and met with, uh, it was uh, their attorney, Jennifer Ivey, and uh, three operations people, one of them, Sam White, who is uh, the area supervisor that, painted the white dot on the parking lot. And uh, I met with them and uh, uh, just presented what I knew. And they their, their statement was, the hands are tied. Out of that meeting, I got uh, some email contacts. Anything I found, I've shared with them in, as, as well. Let me ask this then. Have any, any, any yeah, have anyone spoke to the Representative <coughs> Shaw and Senator Wiley Page? I mean, they state that's that's what they're supposed to do, represent us. This so first they, came to my attention anybody, back in 2018. I think I let them know back then about it, but uh, more recently, I have not yet. Uh, this might be a good time. This is a good time. time. Yeah, this is a good time. time. <laughs> they time looking for votes, so, you know, <laughs> hey, go <laughs> for it. <laughs> Well, uh, uh, that's a, that is a good suggestion, but yes. uh, I would add to that, it would be helpful if this council would do the same thing. Uh, I, I, I don't know how to resolve the situation. I can fix my property to a limit, and let me explain what that is. That, that manhole structure is 17 feet deep. It's not a reasonable solution for me to try to fix that culvert leading from that manhole culvert to the gully. It's not practical. You can see there's a building on top of it. <laughs> I've probably lost that building anyway, but it's not practical. I've already been told by one contractor that at that depth, you're into uh, OSHA requirements because of uh, cave-in risk. So what I am allowed to do by, uh, and let me add to that, let me lead into that by saying this, there are two basic views on uh, who is responsible for stormwater, uh, stormwater. One is what they call a common enemy doctrine, and that means the upper landowner tends to be responsible for water that flows onto a lower man, uh, landowner. There's another doctrine called natural flow rule, and that's what Tennessee practices. And that says the lower landowner has to receive water from a higher landowner and deal with it. Okay, so that's, that's the basis. Now, uh, legal cases and precedent, as I understand it, have kind of blended those two. But what comes along with the natural flow rule is what they call riparian water rights, which means once that water comes to my property, I have the right to deal with it how I choose within reasonable choices. And the reasonable choice available to me is to go higher than 17 feet deep and drain that water off to try to protect my property. What I'm required by law is to return it to the natural flow, which is going to be that gully. So when I can find a contractor, and this is part of my problem, every contractor I've dealt with so far walks up to that manhole structure and says, I can't do that, that's public works. And I have to convince them that it's not. And I have not found anybody yet willing to do it. But when I do, it's going to be try to create some type of opening at, in that manhole structure higher up, probably at four or five feet deep, in either a, a culvert or an open ditch that drains it off in a way that tries to uh, protect as much of my property as I can. But when I do that, if I do that, when I do that, I still haven't solved the problem. Still got the blockage on the right of way. And I can tell you that uh, I took that picture you see August 30th. And when I took that picture, I've got video of it as well. There was water running off of that mound of debris you see, <coughs> which means there's water being held behind it. And this was after a full month or more of no rain. So there, 
there is water backed up under that highway and holding there. That's how serious that blockage is. The reason why I said talk to the uh, state representative and the senator is maybe we need to start at the top. Yeah, maybe. Governor, commissioner. I understand. Instead of starting at the bottom, these it, supervisors, they can only do so much because he got to call his supervisor. He got to call. No, let's go to the top. I, I'm just firm believe let's go all the way. So that's why I said talk to get with them. I'm just I, suggesting. I understand that, that but you know, but if, you know. if it's just me alone, it comes across as right. I'm trying to get them to fix my property. Yeah. And I if I if that's the only impression that's given, it still doesn't address the problem on the right of way. And when you start talking about that, that's out of my hand, so to speak, and it comes back to this disagreement between city and state about who's responsible for that. Well, if you look in your packet, there is uh, an attorney general opinion that that suggests once once a uh, project is is finished by TDOT that uh, the city assumes uh, responsibility of administration. I, 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 well, I know, and I and I he Bob when he told me that that was my and I read it, but I. That may be the opinion, but yeah. that's not how we right, op right. never have operated that way. Um, so I don't, I just don't, I just don't know. Uh, go, I'm sorry. I think that this is, like you said, something that we should visit when we are in the construction of this new sidewalk and all of that. I think we should talk to the engineers and all those people and let them know, and then maybe they can also be involved with letting TDOT know that for us to make this project be successful, we have to deal with this. Maybe that's the way we go, uh, because that's kind of really, I feel like the only thing we as the council can do as far as dealing with how it affects things that we have planned, mm -hmm. and maybe we can tie ourselves. Other than that, you know, we're just saying, hey, help our constituent, you know what I mean? But if it's tied to a project that we have coming down the line and we already have an engineers laying this out so um, I think that we should maybe try to tackle that and maybe we can revisit it with you Mr. Williamson after we see if that's a way to when I met with TDOT in Jackson uh, at that time actually that blockage under the right-of-way had was to the degree that there was no more longer a problem on my property there was very little water coming in that manhole structure so I repaired my parking lot put everything back in shape, started renting that building out again, and uh, about uh, two or three weeks later, it washed through and uh, got worse again. Uh, well, I will get with, uh, I was gonna say, I'll get, get with Care Bev, we'll forward, off, forward all the uh, information to our representatives, and I, but I'll just, I'll let you, to ask, to your suggestion is a good idea, but we've all, the, our project won't even, our project's not even is is not going to be with that at all, and they've already went that route. But we'll try it again. So how we? Just saying, because we got, the sidewalk is going to go over one of these culverts, right? Yeah, but they're they have, it's not going to end up. That's the issue is here. Right. Yeah. I'm so Bob, so was you going to say something? Yeah. Oh, he was. I, I mean, the from the purely legal standpoint, we don't really have a dog in the fight, for lack of a better my personal professional experience in dealing with TDOT and TDEC, you know, be careful what I say here on the record of, once they form a position, the only way you're gonna get them to change that position is probably you have to take them to court. I mean, that's just really what it's gonna come down to. Because from our city standpoint, if you're dealing with private property and a state highway, we can't do the repairs even if we wanted to because then TDOT and TDEC and probably who knows what other state agencies are going to be down here, but I like your suggestion. Contacting your state representative and state senator and see if they can. That's about the it. only way to. Because what we could do. They would get a letter from us of basically, hey, can you help out a constituent? And they're going to probably just throw it in the trash. Because basically, why would they even respond to me? Because they're going to say, well, you don't have a dog in this fight anyway. I mean, does that make sense? 
No. <laughs> <laughs> not so, from what I've read, no, it didn't. So can we send a letter out to Paige and, and, and uh, Shaw about this issue and see what, get their opinion? Or I'll, what? I'll mention this. I did talk to no, Johnny. No, I'm talking about can. I know. I, I talked to Johnny Shaw just the other day, and he offered to go ask TDOT was going. I please I asked him, please hold off until after this meeting. So. Uh, yeah. Uh, I think we check with them two people first and then see what we can get rolling, you know, because they they right there with the governor. They see him daily. Like Larry said, you know, we'll just go up higher. Yeah, we got to go up a little higher. And that's save a, like a shortcut in a way. Well, to, to the suggestion about going to court, I'm, I'm not going to choose to do that. It's, it's uh, short of principle I mean I could fight it on principle but I'd spend a lot of money fighting the principle but justifiably I, I can't do it. it that there's not enough revenue in that building uh, to justify the legal cost I would incur and on to have a legal fight I'm not sure I can win yeah uh, I would appreciate that, but again, don't, don't, please don't make it come across as I'm asking that my property be fixed. I would enjoy that. That would be great. But my concern is my, me fixing my property is not going to solve the problem. <laughs> no, they got to fix that manhole and that water coming on the road. Then you can fix yours. But fixing yours, they ain't going to do nothing but wash it away sooner you do it. I looked at it. It looked like the cover done shift on the ground there or something, you know. Just looking at it. Uh, I don't have uh, pictures of, of what happened down there, but I, I do have some pictures that uh, there I'm is. I'm telling a, how old well, you how It's in your packet. Right, John. So uh, if we can send a letter to John and Paige and then see what feedback we get from them, that would be the, about the highest thing we can do. Well, when I suggested that there was a collapse there, uh, I was told first that uh, as soon as I fixed my problem, that problem would go away. Uh, that it was, my problem was probably causing a softening of the ground. I don't know where that came from. And then more recently, uh, when I said there was probably debris in there, they said that that could be sucked in there from anywhere. I, I don't it's understand like stuff, you know, <laughs> their answers. Anybody else from council? We'll be then. We'll be in touch, and I'll get with Representative Shaw. I mean, well, I know me and you will have correspondence between the next few days, and just figure out, you know, best way to handle it from there. And I'm sure this issue will be back on us, but you know, I know Bob has just to let y'all know everything we've suggested. Bob has done his due diligence on for days, weeks, months. Um, so, but hopefully we can get a resolution out okay. for it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Burke. Anything else? All right, that motion will adjourn. So moved. Motion by Mr. Kenneth, second by Mr. Williams. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed?